Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Linney here, and I have my man Tyler in the house. How are you doing, sir? Doing good. Thanks. Doing good, man. So you are you got your hands in a couple different things, a lot of different things, and I love it. And we'll talk about all that stuff. But um, what I like to do with my guests is kind of let them tell the story and, and kind of start their thing where they want to, and, and I'll let you take it away. Okay. Um, like an introduction uh, about me. Is that kind of what you're sure? And you can start it wherever you want. Yeah. So, um, I, right now I run Titan automation. That's uh, really the, the ma- my main gig. Um, we, we also implemented Titan crypto recently. Um, so I guess two, two of my passions, I'm, I'm more passionate about crypto to be honest versus <laughs> e-commerce, but, um, that's what I, th- th- I guess that, that's my business that I'm running right now. Um, <laughs> you know, as far as where did I come from? Um, so I, I grew up playing tennis. I ended up playing tennis at a D one school, went to school, um, actually went into like the medical field. So I did a master's in athletic training and then never used that degree. I ended up coming straight out of uh, my master's degree into tech sales and then kind of jumped around at different companies doing sales, uh, moved to customer support because I also liked kind of the implement and, and imp- implementation. And then uh, the last kind of nine to five I did was, was at a startup company managing their implementation department. And then, um, you know, I decided to, that I wanted to kind of dive into the entrepreneur space. So that's how I got involved with e-commerce. I've met a lot of really cool people along the way. Um, I've also learned a lot about entrepreneurship and, for me that I, th- I think the most important thing that I've learned over the past, like two years is like working with people that align with my core values. Cause I know me and you connected uh, via Arte yeah. and uh, th- that's something that, you know, over, again, over the past two years, that's been uh, super big for me is just connecting and connecting with people that have my same core values and keeping those types of people within my circle. And uh, so that's, that's been super important, but yeah. So right now running Titan automation, which has been a lot of fun. I have a business partner there. His name is Brenton. Um, and then we have a back end. I, I think, you know, Carlos, but, uh, me and Carlos yes, are also partnered up and he runs my back end for Titan automation. Um, and then Titan crypto is something I just started. So, uh, mm-hmm. something I'm, I'm also pretty passionate about, but yeah. And I think I've learned my lesson the hard way on that value alignment thing. And, and I'm still going through some of it right about now that I'm about to get out of. And, um, you know, we all say the same thing. We say, um, you know, oh, we're friends, you know, nothing's going to happen. And, you know, what I've come to realize really quickly is when money gets involved, people change. And uh, I care more about supporting the people that I'm in business with and partnered up with and who they are and why they're doing it Mm -hmm. way more than I give a shit about uh, what they're making or how much money they make or what car they drive. I don't know about you. That's just my view on everything as I move forward in my life. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, yeah I, I agree hundred percent there. So it's awesome. And you'll be very proud of me. So I'm on the cutting edge of coaching. I have taken my last two coaching clients in on Bitcoin. They oh, paid nice. me in Bitcoin. So oh, it's sweet. been <laughs> for me and we're doing an NFT project together around the book I'm writing. So I'm really interested to talk to you about this crypto stuff. And yeah. what is it about, what is it about this, um, style of money or whatever platform or blockchain that has got you so excited and, and, and really resonates with you? Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't really touch on my like crypto experience. So I, I got into crypto back in 2017. I feel like a lot of people mm-hmm. did. Um, that's when Bitcoin ran up to like 20 K. Um, mm-hmm. and so that, that's kind of where I, I dove into the, into the space and just got really fascinated by the tech and the innovation that that was there. Um, and so I, you know, a lot of people that get into crypto, they call it like the rabbit hole because you can go super deep into all the different projects that are coming out and different, you know, problems they're trying to solve. But that's when I got into crypto back in 2017. And when I got into crypto, it was a lot of like vaporware. 
you know, there were all these like great ideas, these projects, you know, these, these really cool ideas, but nothing really worked. They didn't have users. These, the companies weren't really generating revenue. And so what ended up happening with, with uh, me and why I'm so passionate about crypto and kind of educating people on it is I went into crypto with like no plan. So I was just buying assets. They weren't cash flowing. You know, I was just hoping that they went up. I didn't have an exit strategy. I didn't have any kind of plans at all. So um, I learned the hard way, you know, uh, my portfolio was like at all time highs. And then I rode that. If you're familiar back in 2017, we went from like 20 K down to like three K. And so, uh, what I ended up doing is I dollar cost averaged in over the next two years, which we, we had like a two year bear cycle. Um, and that's where I learned a lot about, you know, how to develop like an investing thesis, how to come into crypto with like uh, a way to plan your portfolio. And so that's uh, that's really my biggest goal with Titan Crypto is to help educate people on how to approach the crypto space rationally. And um, the I guess the other reason why I find it so fascinating now, because I got, so I dollar cost averaged in and then I actually um, sold, um, I got out of crypto because I was kind of burnt out because I, you know, I sat through this bear, bear cycle for two years. Um, but then I started to realize that, you know, you can approach crypto like a business. Um, so I like I, I use like a profit first strategy where all of my positions, like my investing thesis is cash flow. So everything I touch in crypto has to pay me. And so that's really again, that's that's what I like to educate people on is how to come in, develop an investing thesis, how to, you know, develop a portfolio that's not going to just blow up in their face and um, really approach it like a business because that's what it is. You can create a lot of cash flow and ultimately, you know, live off of that cash flow, which that's what I'm doing right now. So yeah, and I don't think on on you know most if you ask most investors, I don't think they have a thesis for anything. And like yeah. you know, all my buddies that buy apartments, they're like, dude, you're buying a business. Like that's a the apartment is a business, and there's people yeah. inside of it that work there, and there's people that live there, and 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 so you know that's awesome that you're doing that because like I really think you know one of the things I tell people all the time is I think that too many people these days are trying to invest to get out of something. Mm -hmm. instead of investing to enhance something. Yeah. Right. And I learned a lot of that from the profit first method as well, too. It's like, like, so every one of my businesses, here's the cash flow. We take a percentage out and that goes into a long-term asset or somewhere else, the stock market yeah. or crypto or everything that's invested again. So that money's invested three different times until it <laughs> ever really hits us. And, and I think if everybody did that and they stopped, you know, trying to go off for these home runs and they actually had a reason why they were doing it and getting yeah. in on this thing, I think that they would be far better off, but they're not taking the time to really uh, draw what makes sense. To them. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the other thing too, is like, it, at least with crypto, uh, you kind of hinted at this, but like people come in and they over allocate, you know, they take like 50% of their portfolio and they go buy like Dogecoin or whatever, coin you know that the, that their friend bought or something that's pumping and so it's all emotionally based and so again that that's really what tight crypto is all about is educating people on how to uh how to be self-sufficient in the space because there is a barrier to entry uh, to even get in into the ecosystem so 100 percent. and i think what's interesting is that like i true story and i'll just be call myself out like I don't really know what's going on per se, but, but like, meaning that like what I'm comfortable with doing, and I think this is super important. And uh, I have lots of friends that are in it. I coach uh, an entire uh, metaverse team, NFT nice. team. Um, that's new for me. I coach CEO and some other stuff, but what happened to me when I started entering the space in, in from a different point of view of what you're doing is I realized one thing and one thing very quickly. It's community. Mm -hmm. It's community without censorship, right? Yeah. We, we want an opportunity. And so I can get behind that. And I know that there's enough smart people that this is something, right? And yeah. so if this is something, then I'm going to take part of what I make and I'm going to put it there. And I'm not going to be upset if in 10 years, that's this much, right? And so yeah. what I'm more intrigued about and what we've been talking about because of my specialty is doing a short-term rental in the meta universe. Okay. Like a digital, so, digital, like a digital Airbnb. Okay. Yeah. That's you cool, know, man. and like, I'm, I'm just so 
like, and the thing is, is like, I have no idea what it's going to look like. I don't even know if we're going to do it, but like, it's just fun to wait in the water sometimes. Right. Mm-hmm. And see what, what comes up and see what kind of people you meet. And I met such amazing people in different walks of life and, um, different scenarios. Right. And so, you know, when you've jumped in this space and, and you left your job, I, was there any hesitation uh, when you left your job or was it kind of like, this is my time. And, 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 you know, how do you look back on that time when you made that? Cause that's what most people are doing. They're trying to do that transition. Yeah. Yeah. I think it like, I, I was, I talk with you know a few, few of my friends about this, like probably every day, you know, it, I, what I've realized is like entrepreneurship, it's so hard. Like it's not for everybody. Um, there's some days where, you know, I'm like, man, maybe I should go get a job. Like maybe I should go get a nine to five. And then, then I have a day where I'm just like on a super high. Right. And so, um, that, that, that's, that's been like a learning thing for me. I think over the past two years, it's, um, I just, I, I've just kind of accepted that, you know, I'm going to have down days and, but I know that there's always going to be good days. And so that's kind of what helps me kind of push forward. Um, along with like, I know you do like 75 hard, like sticking to like habits, um, exercising, yep. like taking care of my body. And then I feel like that, you know, helps me continue to stay focused on, uh, like our, our business goals and kind of stay driven that way. But yeah, it's like, it's not entrepreneurship's not easy. Right. So, mm-hmm. um, well, I, I see that, you know, I seen your Instagram and like, you have like a skiing day with like your son and like, yeah. that's so important. Like, and it's so mattered. And it's funny that you say like entrepreneurship, like some days I want a nine to five, some days I want to give up. Yeah. I'm very fascinated with, and I almost want to write a book and I want to interview entrepreneurs wives because oh, yeah. I think the spouse of an entrepreneur is such a unique uh, place to be because you have to support and not dampen yeah but you also can't let them like beat themselves up. It's like this weird dynamic, you know? And like, yeah. um, when you have that partner, like it's super important that it really, it really enhances you being able to be the entrepreneur that you need to be. Yeah. I, I feel like I've got that pretty easy. Like my, my wife has been, so she's, she's a developer like that. She's been developed, like working as a developer for about eight years. Uh, but she recently, like right now she's on maternity leave, but she's also an author, which, uh, I know you, you, uh, I don't know if you, if you have books out or I, th- I believe you do. I it's in the pro one. it's in the process. I'm trying okay. to, I'm trying to do one for my 40th birthday, which okay. is at the end of the year. Awesome. So. Basically what I'm saying is, you know, she's an entrepreneur as well. So like it, it kind of fits, uh, that we're, that we're both there to support each other. Um, and that's been, that's been super helpful. I think, uh. I, I saw somebody post this the other day, like you choose who you marry, you choose, you know, uh, what you do for work. And so like, I think it's good to like, it, it is good to have like somebody else who, who knows what you're going through. Um, so. No, hundred percent. And I think it's super important to create space. So what would you say if somebody's getting into crypto, what is the number one things they need to be looking at when they're assessing getting into the space? Yeah. Like for, for brand new beginners, I was, again, my specialty is like DeFi. I have kind of dabbled in NFTs. Like I buy NFTs that I like that I think are going to be around for a while. Like I like the Disney drops and stuff like that. Um, but as far as like my specialty, it's DeFi. So like decentralized finance, um, and for people that are brand new to the space, they need to learn how to save. So like, um, before they even get off of these centralized exchanges like Coinbase and Gemini or crypto.com, like they need to learn how to just dollar cost average. And then once somebody is kind of, you know, that they know how to save, they know how to dollar cost average these main blue chip assets. That's where they can dive into like something like anchor protocol, um, or maybe like urine finance or Aave, kind of these other, you're, you're like one layer deep into the ecosystem. Um, so yeah, I, I guess uh, for for beginners, yeah, just learning how to save and then coming up with a thesis, right? Like before you touch any kind any assets, uh, you know, come up. What's your thesis? Like, what are you going to invest in? Are you trying to buy stuff that's going to cash flow? Or are you just trying to hedge against inflation? Um, one thing I didn't really touch on that you mentioned that that got me really interested in the space was just the fact that I could be my own bank. Like, if I want to go take a loan out, I take a loan out. If I want to send my funds. To somebody else's wallet or like wherever I, I can do that. Like there's, there's no central, like uh centralized party that's dictating what I do with my capital. 
And so that that's really what got me really fascinating, fascinated in crypto back in 2017. Um, and then uh, again, one other thing I didn't really touch on, but like the fact that you can take stable coins, that's probably where I would recommend somebody uh, gets educated is on stable coins because you can, right now I'm generating anywhere from 20 to 100% APY on stable coins, which is pretty fascinating um, because there's no volatility to those assets. The the main risk would be like uh, like smart contract risk, getting your funds like hacked. That's really the biggest risk in crypto with any platform you interact with. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question, but yeah, just starting with the basics and then kind of developing a thesis for what you're going to be doing trading rules like you know for for example i don't make any trades unless i'm at my desktop um i don't take any <laughs> trades unless like I don't, buy, I don't buy a new entry unless it it's sitting in like a technical analysis like reload zone and so i've, I've got like my trading rules that like if i stick to those i'm not emotionally buying things that Dude, sense. that rule. First of all, sorry, I had to move the, the oh, podcast inside because the because the guy decided to start a leaf blower like oh. <laughs> in my ear. Uh, but that rule, that right there, I might take that rule and run with it. I do not buy trades unless I am at my computer because when yeah. we are on the go and distracted, sometimes we do emotional stuff. Yeah, and you know, you talk, you listen to all the stories about the people. I shouldn't have sold. I shouldn't have done this. It's because you overreacted. Yeah. Like you got to breathe a little bit, you know, when yeah. you're, when you're, when you're spending money and investing, even me, like we've had a real estate deal fall through three times and now we're back on the table. And it's mm -hmm. like, you gotta, gotta, you gotta, gotta check yourself, you know, like, yeah. you know, so that's, that's a really good rule. I love that. Yeah. No, you did. And I think, I think that they're all trying to find the next Dogecoin and they're investing because it's, there is no financial, um, incentives there's, there's no real structure to the thing like you're investing in things that actually have like real structure and they're they're yeah. doing this right and so i think that we're when we're investors like this is my theory and this is just my thing i can't stand how investors talk about like well i only buy in this market and i only do you know i only buy when the market's here like dude yeah. i'm buying all the time <laughs> like, and there's, there's always deals, right? Do you yeah, feel the right. same way about right. the crypto market, no matter what it is? Yeah. I mean, right now the, we're definitely at like a premium with everything, but yeah. there's always going to be, if you dig hard enough, you can find good entries into projects. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I think there's always going to be opportunity. And one, one other thing I teach our clients is, and I think this is super important if you're going to develop a crypto portfolio is only ever allocate. And again, this is subjective. This is what I do. You know, I only ever allocate 1% to something brand new outside of stable coins. Yeah. Like if I'm going to take like a position in like a volatile asset, not, not that I'm going to buy Doge, but like, let's just say I wanted to get into Doge. I'm only going to put 1% in there until I've developed like a conviction for that, uh, for that yeah. asset. And then I'll continue to maybe dollar cost average into it. Maybe during down markets, I'll, I'll dump more into it. But, um, the, the thing in crypto is 1% can turn into 10% super fast. And then that changes your entire portfolio. You can rebalance. Um, you can really uh, grow a portfolio into something great. Like it should evolve into a great portfolio. I don't feel like you should just all of a sudden have this like amazing portfolio, right? Like from day one, you should, it should be something you like, you know, you put 1% into these positions, they grew, you added to them, you, mm -hmm. they grew, you, you know, you, your conviction for them is higher. And so, that, that's something I think super important if you're going to get into crypto and, and you don't want to blow up your portfolio. Cause again, people come in and allocate like 20% to a position they've never been in before. They barely know much about the project. And so um, I think just, you know, sticking with those like 1% allocations and letting them grow decreases a lot of risk. And then, you know, staying the majority of your, of, of I think a crypto portfolio should be like stable coins. Cause like, Mm -hmm. the volatility there's no volatility and you can generate really good apy so mm -hmm. yeah and just for anybody that's out there that doesn't because you've said it a couple of times and i want to make sure that i give everybody the most value possible oh yeah did you give me the did you give me the easiest explanation of dollar cost average um yeah yeah so like let's say you take uh let's say you've got a hundred dollars or five hundred dollars a month that you can allocate to crypto 
um, that's where you're, maybe you're, you're taking that $500 and once a month you're deploying that into whatever assets you choose. So maybe you buy Bitcoin once a month on the 15th and you put $500 into it every month. And that way you're, you're getting like some of the lows of the market. You're getting some of like the middle sections of the market. And then, yeah, you're buying the tops sometimes, but, um, over the, the long term, right? Like you're going to be getting really good entries into that position. Um, but yeah, that, that's really what dollar cost averaging is. You can break it up however you want. Maybe you buy weekly, maybe you buy uh, every couple months, uh, but it's something that you just stick with and it, that you got to be, I think, consistent with. Um, and again, ex especially, especially for beginners or people who don't want to like dive into the space because it, it can be really time consuming. If you're going to get, really get into crypto, um, it can be very time consuming. So if you want exposure to crypto, but you don't want to be like spending, you know, your whole day in there, that's where dollar cost averaging is great. Cause uh, you can even get that. You can do that automated. If you're going to use like Coinbase or I think maybe crypto.com and Gemini offer like automation for dollar cost averaging. So. Yeah. And I, I told somebody the other day that I'm only in crypto for one reason and that's to teach me emotional stability yeah um because it's you know it's just one of those things but by doing dollar cost average you know you don't have to think you know about it's, it's pure investment with with logical thinking and i think yeah. one of the things i really love about blockchain and crypto is the fractional ownership and that's the same tack that we're taking with our short-term rental fund mm -hmm. is that not only are you going to be able to invest in short-term rentals all around the country luxury and have a part of it we're also going to teach you uh airbnb so you can go do it on your own so you know there's coursing there's and you have the investing and stuff and and um i would imagine that over time what what you're doing with your crypto space is yes you're going to teach but also you know kind of giving them the keys to to their own thing but also pointing them in the right direction and i, I would imagine that you get a lot of fulfillment out of it i know i do from the, from an airbnb perspective yeah yeah, I mean, again, that's why I started Titan Crypto. Just I feel like there's a lot of people that want to get into crypto um, because it's it's obvious now that there's a lot of uh, um, I'm gonna try and say there's a lot of like opportunity there. Like you, you know, you could sit in a bank account making like 02 percent, or you could get into crypto and make twenty percent uh, very safely. So yeah, that's that's why I you know why I started Titan Crypto is because I know there's a lot of people who want to get into the space. It's kind of intimidating. Um, and so through Titan Crypto, you know, we can help educate people, kind of handhold them into the space. And then from there, they can really dive in um, safely. I think that's important just because it is it is the wild, wild west. There's a lot of ways yeah. to get hacked. There's a lot of ways to get your money like stolen or lost. And so if you have somebody that can kind of educate you on how to get in safely uh, and, and again, develop like a thesis, you're going to be more confident in what you're doing. So. Yeah, all. wonderful, man! I tell you what, I've been I've been meaning to, and we finally got somebody on here to talk some some crypto and some some other yeah. stuff. So super excited! Yeah. So if people want to find out uh, about your e-commerce or your learning and all that stuff, how would they how would they find out about all the good stuff? Yeah, so Titan.biz. That's going to have uh, everything about our e-commerce uh, stores that we that we run, um, and then also all about our crypto uh, stuff that we're launching. Um, and then if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Tyler J. Klontz. Um, that's my Instagram handle. So yep. Wonderful. Guys, you just got a crash course and a lot of good stuff. <laughs> Mainly a dollar cost average investing. You should be doing that in your bank account, period. Not just in investing. So that's just a, uh, an amazing hack to just take for the rest of your life. Uh, so if you got some value from this, send it to somebody that uh, will enjoy it. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one -on -one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.